There we go. Hello, Facebook, Jacqueline Francis here, author, award-winning speaker and educator. And today I have a special guest for you. Her name is Angie Morgan, and she is a mother of six. Um, and she'll be sharing, as you know, the topic today is, well, single parenthood. And the show is Stop Sweeping Under the Carpet. So a lot of us tend to sweep a lot of things, emotions and things that have happened to us under the carpet because they're, you know, afraid of what other people might say or you may be judged um, on those issues. So I'd like, what I'm trying to do is to get people to open up and stop sweeping those things under the carpet because it doesn't serve you, it doesn't help you, it doesn't serve you any purpose. And actually, you know, if you do talk about those things that you've swept under the carpet, how it may benefit somebody else. And that's how it started with myself. So I have a special guest, Angie. So I'm just going to bring her on now. Okay, there we go. Hello. Hi, <laughs> Hi Angie. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you for having me. It's really kind of you to invite me on. No problem. No problem at all. So today, let me just see. Yeah, okay. So today, um, as I said, we've got Angie. So Angie, if you can quickly introduce yourself to our viewers. Okay, my name's Angie Morgan. I am a single mum of six. My children range from 20 all the way down to almost 16 months. Um, I was a teenage mum. I mean, I'm in my 30s now. So my first three children, I was pregnant at 16 and then had another son at 18 and by 21 i had my daughter also so three children very very young right okay so i know sometimes when i have guests on they just want to sort of like run through it you know what i mean and i've always got to sort of like um rein them back in so let's just start from the beginning as i said the title of the show is stop sweeping it under the carpet you say that you were um um pregnant or had your first child at the age of 16. yeah I do, yeah yeah, so so, before I was 17, actually. So he, he came just the day before my 17th birthday. Wow. A period in my life, yeah. So when you were 16, 17, 16, 17, were you still at school, I take it? I just left school. Um, I think I was pregnant within a few months of leaving as a school leaver. So I did go into work um, mm. and fell pregnant very, very quickly as a school leaver and worked up until not long before I had him, yeah. Right, so at 16, I mean, that's such a delicate age anyway, you know, to me, the world is your oyster, you know, and so did you have any, uh, what were you like as a, as a person in school? What were you, describe your characteristic, your personality. By my teens, I was very rebellious. Um, I was a very, very shy child. Um, if I go back to primary school, that's, that's quite a long time ago, I um, had a lot of issues with self-esteem and bullying as the years went by. Mm -hmm. And by secondary school, I rebelled because of that. It was almost a case of, okay, if you don't, it's sink or swim, I think for some children, you know, mm -hmm. you almost find a way to adapt into certain peer groups. And for me, sadly, the case was I became quite rebellious. But what um, were you rebelling about? What were the things that you were rebelling about? Or is it just a typical 16-year-old uh, thing? Yeah, I mean, I was very difficult. Um, my, I truanted a lot, uh, mm. partied a lot, that, that type of thing. I was academic. I was almost, in my reports, it always said, you know, very academic, but doesn't take the work seriously. Almost a refuser. I just refused to do the work. Always the rebel, always the class clown, sadly. Mm. Um, on reflection, that probably was just me being rebellious and a cry for help, you know, that I didn't quite fit in. Um, mm. Underneath the layers, I was actually quite shy um, mm. and of a nervous disposition, and it was just my way to survive amongst that kind of environment. That's how mm. I, I did survive that. Right. So, um, you know, 16, you're still at home, you know, when you told your mom, how did, how did that conversation play out in your yeah. mom? My mum, I mean, my mum was, she was, she's a great mum. She still is a great mum. Um, it was very hard for her to, to reel me in. She did try. Mm. And if I'm honest, I think in my case, she probably wasn't surprised going by the behaviours and, and the habits and the patterns and so on, that it, it wasn't a surprise to her, unfortunately. Now, obviously, she didn't rejoice. Yeah. Uh, 
that it was a case of okay this has happened let's move forwards yes right so are you an only child do you have siblings I'm not. I've got quite a few siblings, actually. My father, um, they divorced when I was around five or six. My father's got children with various different women. Again, I'm not here to talk about that, but to paint a picture, there's a lot of family dynamics and broken mm. families and remarriages and so on. But I grew up with two younger brothers mm. in the home. And I've got two younger sisters that I'm still in contact with on my dad's side. So there's a few of us almost dispersed. Right. Okay. So, you know, you've okay. So your child is born, and um, being a young mother, how did you cope? Were you coping? Were you pretending to cope? I think the rebellious side kicked in, and it was a a case of I'll show them. You know, I've I've been this naughty, you know, labelled child for a few years. Mm. And I had a full time job. So, again, not always the stereotype. You know, we see these teenage girls and we think, okay, people put shame on them. And certainly yeah. a lot of shame was put on me. Um, I did actually suffer workplace bullying in the workplace, which was quite interesting because I was only 16. I was in a secretarial role. Mm. And I recall the manager actually saying, You're pregnant, you're not stupid. Um, so again, I still suffered that shaming of not it's okay, but I almost came to accept that this is how people may respond to you now. Um, so that was always in the back of my mind to almost project this capable, you know, I'd go out and buy all the parenting books. I'd yeah. show that I could afford to buy his clothes, you know, his equipment and so on. I was still living with my mum at the time. Yeah. Um, I wasn't single. I did his, his father did move in, move in with us at my mum's house at the time as well. Mm. Uh, so I'd always get that in, you know, that, that the father would come to the appointments with us and so on. But it was a show, if I'm honest. I was putting on a show. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My paternal grandmother died during the time that I was actually in labor and I did make it to her funeral. So again, a lot of a lot of changes, you know, be it hormones and, and life events were happening at the time. And the more that was thrown at me, I do remember putting on this shell that I'll show you world that yeah. makes sense. So did you feel as if you were almost wearing this this mask? Because I mean having a a, a baby so, at such a young age and all those emotions that are going through you and you know I don't know, expectations, and you're trying to prove everybody wrong. But at the same time, how, how do you cope? How do I cope? You know, yeah. and it was a huge how, wake up call. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm quite lucky. I, I, I am one of life's copers. I'd had a lot of experience with children. So it wasn't a case of where you hear of some mums, particularly young mums, you know, they're handed this little baby. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time they've ever held the baby and they don't know what to do. And, and I've got friends, you know, that even in their 30s and 40s, they still experience this feeling. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was quite privileged. I was, I mean, I wouldn't say a natural, but I, I knew what I was doing in terms of going through the motions. And I did bond with him quite well. So it was, it was there was positives and negatives to that period of my life. And mm. I would say that I cope quite well. However, mm. I then fell pregnant again. And that was a huge shock to me. Um, the realities of seen, then. the second son. Yeah, by 18, I'd had him. And mm. by then, I was living in quite a dingy little bed set. And, mm. you know, again, to the world, I've got a bed set. You know, I'm, 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 I'm fine. I'm doing all this. Mm. And... On the inside, I remember the, the absolute fear of how on earth can you cope with two? You know, yeah. I can meet the needs of one. Yes, yes. And it was that feeling of dread that, you know, you, you can't stop time, you can't turn back. Yeah. And it wasn't I didn't want to be pregnant, I just knew the realities of you know, I was quite naive the first time. I think when we don't know whatever age we are, our first baby, yeah. Yeah. it's almost a case of it's quite an exciting time regardless, you know, dependent on the person. You know, I understand not for everyone. I respect that. Um, a hugely different, different experience. 
And again, did um, you know, I know you said that your mum sort of half expected it the first time round. Um, did she think that you would have learnt your lesson? You know, what was her reaction when you had your second child? And again, were you trying to get the smart from that you can cope? I think so. And I think if you were to ask her now, she'd probably, you know, tell the truth about her feelings. Um, yeah. At that time, very stiff upper lip, you know, and I was the same. I'd come from women that, I think we mentioned this before when we've had a chat, sometimes you come from a culture of you make your bed, you lie in it, you know, you, you, you keep going and you're strong and that's what strong women do. Yeah, yeah. So in my mind and in my conditioning, it was a case of don't tell them, just, you know, just carry on, just do what you need to do. Don't tell them, don't tell them that you're pregnant. Well, I told them that I was pregnant, but what I didn't tell them was all my fears. Um, and right and the dread and I kept it all inside you know and I, and I did I swept it under the carpet I went to the appointment I acted very capable to the health visitors and the midwives and so on mm. um and you know I was 18 years old you know I had a baby in one hand and a big bump on the other yeah. and you know I remember crying a lot at the time you know I was a kid you know and mm. and I think at 18 we're still children in a sense yeah. So when you were crying, you were crying behind closed doors. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and I put on a really good show. You know, even through the labour, I was very capable. Um, I was sent home quite quickly. They were quite happy that no, nope, she's fine. You know, she'll have her visits and so on. But I did sink into a depression. Um, time went on. I hid very well that I didn't really want to go out much. And again, I don't quite know how that crept in but there was a lot of anxiety and no, wow. I think you would label it as agoraphobic maybe um I'd always want to be with someone I think that was again to show these coping strategies mm. of should anything go wrong and I was on my own I just you know I couldn't show the world that I can't cope with this toddler there's 17 months between them there was so I had the double buggy and I and I hid it really really well and I don't know how I hid it you know even looking back you do, you do though isn't it it's almost sort of like a coping mechanism at times um you know but by the time you got to 21 yeah. you're saying, you had another child by the time you're 21 I did yeah my my maternal grandmother died and within that time period I found out I was pregnant again um by this time I'd I still suffered what I'd say I, I still suffered depression at that time um mm. but I very much enjoyed the children again when we think of postnatal depression we hear these stories of not bonding um oh, wow. I was very much into child development I always was you know and resources and nurturing the child yeah I yeah, think yeah. as mums again and a lot of mums that may watch this can relate even yes, yes. though you pour yourself into the child no matter your age you need to nurture yourself and and yeah. i didn't at all um, yeah. and i was grieving at the time which was yeah. a hugely anxious time because again i mm. i was worried how that would affect the pregnancy how it would affect the baby and so on yeah and um, so if I can just speak for those some of the in the replay. My name is Jacqueline Chance and I'm going to be Angie. Can you hear me okay? Because I think you can see feedback. A slight bit of feedback, just that last sentence I got there. Yeah, yeah okay. <clears throat> so Angie's just sharing with us her experiences of the things that she had swept under the carpet. She had her first child when she was 16 and then um, 17 months later she had her second child and by the time she was 21 she had her third child um, she had she did a very good job of masking it and sweeping those issues and those emotions under the carpet um, to a point where people thought that you know you're probably mature for your age and that you're coping but in actual fact you know you weren't because <clears throat> you go on to say that you suffered from depression mm -hmm. so how did that depression manifest itself a lot of anxiety um, and, a, and a lot of internal thoughts. So again, as much as I, I was very, very conscious of how I looked at, to the outside world, you know, be it taking my son to nursery or even just going shopping, you know, just a normal daily function. I was very, very conscious to the point of obsessive about mm. how I, I carried myself, how I responded to the children. I, I just couldn't be myself. Yeah, so. um, 
and very suspicious of others, what they thought of me. And I, I think when you're trying so hard to try to be yourself, knowing that this is not the true you, but the true you comes out behind closed doors. When you get home, it's almost as if you're unveiling that mask. Absolutely. To be who you are, you know, because I know that when I had my first child, I almost, as I said to you before, I felt as if I was on autopilot. And I'm sure, you know, parents could resonate that you sort of like end up going through the motions pretending that you can cope or you know and not asking for help um you know mm-hmm. trying to be this strong person until it you know catches up with you in in terms of mm-hmm. as you said the depression and the anxiety um so yeah so you say that you had three children at 21 so when did your other children because there's a big gap now isn't there yeah, gap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nine and a half years if i'm correct i'd have to count on my fingers the exact months at nine and a half years yeah i mean it's almost like different decades, a different life perspective. Yeah. Um, and again, the, the feelings that I went through as a teenager and the things that I hid from the outside world and to my loved ones and so on, it was that you couldn't ask for support. Yeah. Um, with my fourth, I was 30. So I've had the other three in my 30s. They're six, mm-hmm. four and one. And it became really apparent that what I thought only I was going through, other mums go through this. Yes. Uh, and no one told me, you know, no one told me that it's it's okay to be feeling like you're feeling. It's actually quite normal. Yeah. Uh, to be, you know, for all sorts of reasons. And mm-hmm. I think it, that's why open communication is really important. You know, yeah. you can be 16, you can be 50. When you have a baby, it can you know it can be your first or you know consecutive babies. It's a really vulnerable time. Yeah, yeah. And we and do feel age as well. Totally, any age at all, and we feel this pressure to to you know just just carry on. We we don't read what we're feeling, and we don't reach out. Mm. Um, yeah. I often wonder how things would have panned out had I had the support that I needed. Yeah. Uh, you know, even in terms of bonding with my second son, it took a lot longer. Wow. Again, I thought that was something wrong with me. You know, what's wrong with me? I, this one I'm really in tune with and aligned with, and it all worked out quite naturally. Mm-hmm. And the second son, it didn't. I couldn't read him very well. Um, so do, you I, think that was because, do you think that was because you were still sort of like anxious with the first one? Because they say that babies can feel how you're feeling. Do you think you know, that might have had something to do with it. Yeah, I think they do read your energy. And and again, you know, I was so on edge all the time to show yeah. that, you know, okay, that they're clean, they're fed, they're behaving themselves. Again, what do we even mean by behaving themselves? Yeah. They're behaving. Yeah. But it and, again, and again, you want to prove the point that you can cope. Absolutely. People would look at me and like, this girl can't cope with those children. Yeah um yeah. anything was amiss you know and, and it was silly trivial things yeah but again i think shame comes into it you know people's reaction to, to being a teenage mum being pregnant the pregnant teen mm. particularly with more than one you know it was like you say almost a case of not again you know have you not learned your lesson yeah. there was that perception that underlying perception that that's what people are thinking of me Mm-hmm. Um, did you personally feel this, you know you talk about shame shame and embarrassment did you feel that um, very much so very much so and, and comments you know from various people in society i think it still goes on now yeah. um you know some of it is suspicion and sometimes people don't think what we think they think but at the same time you know there are some people in the world that aren't particularly tactful or aren't particularly kind yeah, um, they can stereotype you. You know, I've 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 worked through quite a lot of stereotypes throughout my life in life and business. Mm. Um, the single mum label again, and I think our perception of what shame is when we lift that and unveil it, yeah, really yeah. really freeing. You know, to be quite open and transparent, and it, and it leads the way for others that are feeling a lot of shame, men and women. You know, yeah. men. And Absolutely, because I I always got upset because I'm you know I've been a single parent for the long single parent for the longest and you know it's when sort of like people from the government you know government are saying you know children from single parents 
you know, um, they wouldn't really amount to that much, so to speak. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, Another like, reason for the anxiety. Yeah, you really yeah, put them in a box. You know, oh, and, my goodness. My children are doomed. <laughs> yeah, you know, and the sheer fact that, you know, I'm, I'm a, a, a graduate as, as a mature student and my two children are graduates as well, you know. So for them mm -hmm. to say, well, look, if you're from a single parent household, then this is what your, you know, your child is going to be like or in this box or they're not going to amount to anything else. It's so frustrating because it's, it's a stereotypical, isn't it? You know? It really is, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of aspects, you know, that, that people paint the picture of you. And we all, we all make assumptions and so on. I'm sure we do. I'm sure it's natural that we, you know, make our own assumptions until we get to know people. Um, yeah. I think that's why sometimes I'm an oversharer these days. It's almost a case of you will you will dig deeper, you know, before you make up your mind. I'm yeah. going to open your mind, and and I think that's that helps us lift the shame as well, and let yeah. others know that it's okay. Yeah, uh, definitely, that's definitely. Circumstances. Yeah. So I mean, okay, I'm conscious of the time. So. I mean, now that, okay, so you've had your, your six children, what do you do now? What's so, your okay, right now I'm a freelancer, you could call it. So I yeah. do, I teach business strategy, I copyright, I do a lot of content and content strategy. So break things down into creative content for other businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, that's me really yeah I'm pretty much a writer I'm working on collating some information about world schooling because I homeschool three of my children was four my son's now in an apprenticeship one's at uni one's in apprenticeship so again mm -hmm. the statistics were slightly wrong you know they did okay we're not perfect and again yeah. I think that's a big thing no one is no family is well, this is it. This is it. Even if you try to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, they still have issues, don't they? Um, so, you know, in closing, you know, what would you like to say to maybe a 16 year old or a parent that has a 16 year old that may have fallen pregnant? What, what is it that you would like to impart on to them? What I would say, and it's what I've applied to my own parenting, and I hope that it's lifted a lot of shame and worries from my own children's journeys through life up until now, is open communication is key. Yeah. Um, open communication is, you know, life or business, you can apply it. Really just be yourself. Mm. As long as your intentions are right, you know, we are human. Yeah, definitely. And you say, you know, you know, as I said, the show is Stop Sweeping It Under the Carpet. Because you did, you ended up suffering from depression and anxiety. So, Absolutely. you know, as well, yeah, you, you must nurture yourself. And when you need help, really speak out. I am far from perfect, even now. Mm. Uh, but it's okay to say that, you know, remove shame and just, just yeah. accept yourself on whatever day and do yeah. the best you can. And we we've got to the point where we don't yeah. care about what people think. We've got to get to that point where we don't, we're not really bothered about what people say about us because it's, ultimately it's your life, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. As long as you know you go through it with kindness and good intentions. You know, I'm not saying you know you have to be rude when it's when you're met with rude comments or perceptions of others. There's a, there is a way to carry yourself. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, yeah, I agree with that. Really, just be yourself, and it is quite cliche, and it's hard. You know, we always. I think throughout our adult life, we will always reflect on, you know, how are we showing up? How are we yeah. presenting ourselves to the world? Um, and humour, you know, we all make mistakes. We all mess up. We all get things wrong. And that's okay. And to teach our children that that's okay. Absolutely. To teach our families that, do you know what? It's okay. It's okay to be honest. Mm. It's okay to ask for help and support. Um, and collaboration again you know I, I think team teamwork definitely in families in particular yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. okay, okay. So, um, <laughs> Angie how can people get in contact with you uh, you can find me on Facebook or my website is haphazardlyhomegrown.com it's quite a mouthful <laughs> It's quite apt because, again, I've almost haphazardly grown life and business and homegrown it in the way that I've seen fit at whatever stage of my life. Um, and I hope people take a lot from that, you know, really just follow your own path, not stereotypical what's expected of you. 
Yeah, I'll put the details in, um, in the link underneath anyway. So, well, yes, we're going to wrap up now. Thank you so much, Angie, for joining me and sharing the issues that you have swept under the carpet and um, explain to our viewers, you know, how it served you and how you are now in a successful Thank you so business. Much. And um, until the next time, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Bye, -bye. Okay. There we go. Thank you.